On November 7th, Nintendo of America tweeted out a new Indie World Direct will showcase about 25 minutes of upcoming indie games on the Nintendo Switch. And really, it got me excited. I love all of these directs, and whenever I get to learn about new games coming out I can make content on, I think it's great. I mean, look at my channel. It's filled with mostly indie games anyways. So let's tackle this direct and talk about everything that happened with every single game announced. The direct starts off with a game called Venba, where you play as an Indian mother who's moved to Canada, who tries to reconnect with her heritage in a toll narrative cooking game. You cook Indian recipes, listen to some great music, and have some conversations with your family. The art style looked nice, and it kind of reminds me of a more relaxed WarioWare or Cooking Mama, which I'll never played. Not really my type of game personally. The graphics look nice, and I'm sure there's some people that are going to love it, but for me, I'll pass on that. Next game is Goodbye World, which I didn't really connect with at all. You play as game creators who are struggling to make money, aren't we all? They showed some platforming aspects that reminded me of Kirby's Dreamland when it was shown, but then you have to work in the game, which did not resonate with me. I feel like a lot of games nowadays just have you do this. I don't want to work at a grocery store in a video game. Really not the strongest start in the indie world. That game also kind of a dud. The graphics look great and I'm sure somebody loves it, but not for me. I'll pass. But next was a total shocker and one of the highlights of the entire show, really. And it was Have a Nice Death, a game that's oddly familiar on this channel, having a couple videos on it. And Have a Nice Death is getting released in March of 2023 on the Switch, which is a great pickup. Very hard roguelite that has great combat, item variety, difficulty enhancer, cute graphics. I think Have a Nice Death is an essential pickup if you're a roguelite fan on the Nintendo Switch. If you don't have a PC, you can't get the game because it's in early access right now. But it's coming out in March of 2023, so one 100% pick this up and after hearing this announcement I was like you know this direct it's not so bad and then after that another game that didn't really resonate with me and it looked like a farming game and those aren't really my thing at all and we know that and it was Akka the game advertised itself as a game where you find inner peace and everything shown just looked like a big cozy game as they'd advertise it not for me at all but if you like farming simulator games, you'd probably like Akka. It looked cute and cozy, but I'm just not gonna play it on stream or make content on it. Maybe I'll play it before I pass out in bed. But after Akka, we had another banger of a game. Well, it looked like a banger and it had my attention immediately because it's published by Devolver Digital. Pepper Grinder is what the game was called. And they didn't talk much about it as it's a whole new game, but you play as Pepper, who's trapped on a deserted island and you gather treasure and solve puzzles in this somewhat fast-paced game. But really at this point in the direct, this is the best a new game. Have a Nice Death is a great game, but it's not new to me. I've been playing it for almost a year, but if you don't have a PC, you won't know that. But this game is probably the best looking game so far on the Direct. Pepper Grinder reminds me of a faster, probably easier Shovel Knight dig, and it's going to release in 2023, hopefully not too late into the year. And then the next two games weren't really up my alley as the first one was Coffee Talk Episode 2, which is where you run a late night coffee shop and serve coffee and talk to your customers. We're not all human. Not at all for me. I don't even drink coffee in general. I'm not going to serve it in a video game. But there's probably an audience for it somewhere. Next looked a little bit better, but still I was unsure about it. And that was Oni, Road to Be the Mightiest Oni. And let me say, I am not a fan of this title. Having the word Oni in there twice, just feels weird to me. But anyways, this game looks more like a Souls-like game where you play as an Oni and their sidekick, which I didn't mind, but I was really distanced from it when during combat, it was said how you will play each character with one Joy-Con. So this game sounds like it was made just for the Nintendo Switch. The combat sounds convoluted and I'm not really into that one Joy-Con thing either. But maybe I'll pick it up. It looked okay. Definitely better than the coffee game for me. Next, I thought we had a dodgeball game, but it turned out to be a character-driven roguelike metaphorical ball game. That's a genre I have never heard of. I will say that right now. And I never thought I would hear it. The game was called Dester The Memories Between, which had nice graphics, but the combat didn't really look fun. It was a turn-based game where you're collecting orbs. Turn-based games are always hit and miss for me. Darkest Dungeon is a turn-based game, and I absolutely love that game. But then there's this game and the graphics look nice, but it doesn't really look like a game I would enjoy. But every single game on this direct, there's somebody out there who was thinking this game is something I would like. And if that person is you with this game, I hope you enjoy it. Just doesn't really resonate with me as well. I'm sorry. Next shown was another game that didn't really interest me, but the graphics were super cute and it was a space for the unbound. This game reminded me a lot of Persona as it seems to have a lot going on. And then of course you need to save the world somewhere in between. Nothing that I'd probably play, but if you're a fan of Persona or those types of games, definitely check it out. It comes out in January of 2023. And then the next three games after the Persona game were three cozy games. I'm going to go through all of them and say what they are, but I'm just going to say they're probably not for me. I'm not going to really play these games, but 
someone out there will so let's talk about them first one was Dordogne which I probably said wrong and if I did I apologize you return to your childhood home and revisit the character's childhood memories and uncover some family truths kind of reminds me of a cute family friendly what remains of Edith Finch an atmospheric story rich game that I'll pass on and I'll also pass on the next game which is Botany Manor as this game you just take care of plants it has some puzzles and you improve your gardening skills and I say no thanks to that but someone somewhere is probably happy with this so hey if that's you enjoy the plants and then after Botany Botany Manor is Once Upon a Jester, which looked like a silly good fun game where you do improv and just click a button at the right time. Looks like it has silly graphics and silly jokes, and it looks like it's good fun for a few hours. And Once Upon a Jester came out the same day as the Direct, so you could play it right now probably. Looks like a good fun, maybe I'll try it out, but you know, looks okay. There was a lot of duds in this Direct, and it's what I expected. Not every game is going to be made for me, and there's someone out there that loves them all, so that's great. But then one of the best games of 2022 got announced for the Switch and it turned this whole Direct upside down for me. And that was Rogue Legacy 2. One of my favorite roguelike games ever you can get hundreds of hours from. This is probably the best announcement from this Indie Direct. And if you only have a Nintendo Switch and you want a hard but fun action platformer roguelike game, oh man, you need to buy this. It's a phenomenal game. Rogue Legacy 2 also has a video on this channel and really seeing it get released on the Switch, it's just nice. Easy to play on the go if you don't have a Steam Deck like me and just like once upon a jester it's released the same day as the direct go buy it and then the final game they showed before the final reel of games which is usually the end of a direct was blanc which is a co-op game where you play as a fox and a deer and solve puzzles with another player it's a nintendo switch exclusive and looks pretty cute overall would definitely be a good game to play through once or twice and experience it with a friend and they finally had the end reel which is usually just a bunch of games they show off quickly that don't have time to get into the actual direct and let me tell you some of these games looked better than all the games they showed showed the first game wrestle quest looked like it had a lot of action packed into it and overall looked pretty good and the graphics were pretty cute too which is a nice little bonus for all of them the other games looked kind of okay kind of hard to tell what's going on with some of them but a lot of action games that looked more fun than what we previously saw one of them had a rat in there it looked pretty great and then at the end they showed inscription like what how did that not make the cut for a commentary inscription is one of the most popular games that were released in the past year i haven't played it but i do know it's very highly rated and popular inscription coming to the switch is fan freaking tastic i'll say i just bought it on steam a couple weeks ago on sale and i'm still trying to find some time to play it but I'm, I'm surprised that didn't make the cut. What the heck, Nintendo? But then, of course, after the final reel, they had two more games to show off. And really, I don't care about the first one at all. The first one, you just organize some stuff and have a cat mess you up. It's another cozy game, to say the least. But lastly, they had an update for a game called Sports Story, which I didn't even know was a thing. It looks like a sports-themed Stardew Valley, to be honest. You go through dungeons, fish, you commit espionage, and play a lot of sports. I'm not the biggest fan of Farm Simulator cozy games, but really, this one has me intrigued since i do like some sports games here and there and it comes out in december and that's an indie direct really that's all the games they showed some good co-op some good action some good variety all around if anyone ever gets mad at indie directs they're crazy they're just a good time and a good 25 minutes to see what games are coming out i'm personally really happy with how this turned out and i hope you are too and if you like this video be sure to subscribe and like it i guess i'll see you next time thanks for watching